I don't typically water my plants in the food forest, but those potted plants definitely need water. And when I do water plants, this is how I do it. Pond water. Here's a shampoo ginger that survived the hurricane. It's kind of messed up, but the, the flower is still going strong. A little juice in there still. And then right over. Water snakes are very common in Florida, and unfortunately, some snakes get misidentified as being a water moccasin or a cottonmouth. And right here, we have one of those snakes. This is an adolescent banded water snake. And the surefire way to be able to tell if this is a venomous or non-venomous snake is to look at the head. First off, the shape of the head is more oval on a non-venomous snake. It's a smaller head, but they do tend to manipulate their heads when they're scared, so sometimes it's hard to tell. You can also tell that this is not a water moccasin because it doesn't have a band going across its eyes. It has several vertical stripes on its mouth. Several non-venomous snakes have those same stripes. That's really the best way to tell. It doesn't really look that much like a water moccasin, but to the untrained eye, it can be very confusing. So this is a beneficial non-venomous snake. When they get bigger, they will actually protect their territory against a water moccasin or a cottonmouth. So don't kill the snake. My homemade passion fruit net made out of Hurricane Ian scrap actually worked. This passion fruit fell and was stopped from going into the pond. But it's way too early for passion fruit to be falling off the vine. Let's go take a look at the inside of this. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is not ripe at all. It's riper than I thought it was. At least it has seeds, but that's not ripe. We're still at least a month away from passion fruit season. This probably fell off the vine because we're not getting any rain. There's Oscar, the homestead dog. Probably wondering what's taking so long. He wants to go back inside. Hey, Oscar, how you doing? This is a small little dwarf Namwa banana pit. It's kind of the transition in between the flooded area and this newer row right here. This is how you start a food forest. Cardboard. <sighs> Done. There we go. New section of the food forest. Edible plants with beautiful flowers. Roselle hibiscus makes gorgeous small white flowers, relatively small compared to other hibiscuses. It has greenish leaves with burgundy tint. It has very large reddish burgundy calyxes that are typically used in tea. There's a good sign that spring is coming. Got some of that yellow fungus. Gorgeous. I've read it's actually beneficial. There's my pop-up gazebo that disappeared after Hurricane Ian. It became visible when the pond receded due to the dry season. I was planning to take my paddle boat out there and drag it out of the pond, but the turtles like to lounge on it to get some sun. And I've seen quite a few fish swimming around it. I think it's now a water feature that attracts fish. So I think I'm going to leave it there. The pond will go up another six feet or so during the rainy season. It's only going to be visible a few months out of the year. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. And here we have a lemon tree. It's all crowded out by this Mexican sunflower in the Biden's elbow. Just do a quick chop and drop here. That's better. Can get some sun now. Needs a good prune too, but I'll save this for later. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. I pulled a piece of Kogan grass out of a mulch pile and the Kogan grass was inside of a snake egg, eating the snake egg. Nature is really weird sometimes. All right, 
Let's get some seeds out of this loofah gourd. Loofah gourds make great ground cover. And of course the vine will, will grow up trees and other plants. It's a great vining plant and ground cover. There's a lot of seeds in here. I'm gonna plant some of these today and save a few to send to someone who might be starting a food forest soon. Here's one more. There we go. Handful of loofa gourd seeds and some crunchy dried up bits. Got my favorite tool for digging holes and some homemade compost slash soil. I scooped up the bottom of the oak mulch and palm mulch piles and then I sifted that to make this soil. Banana plants are very, very hard to kill. This is my banana jungle that I started about nine months ago, and then it was devastated by Hurricane Ian. Many of the banana plants were toppled and just completely destroyed. And then when the tree service came to get rid of the trees that had fallen over, they had to drive directly in this spot. But we've got it's like three little banana plants resurrecting themselves from the corms under the ground. This is number two and number three. Bananas are probably the top food forest plant in Florida. So easy to grow, abundant harvests, a lot of biomass, biomaterial for chop and drop. Just an awesome all around plant. I'm doing my early morning walkthrough of the food forest. I came over to this neglected area that I don't walk through very often. And I noticed all of this Florida betony growing. It's a little bit too early to harvest, but I'm looking forward to it in a couple months. The ground cherry is growing well. There are quite a few fruits on here now. I don't see any other plants coming up yet. Maybe it's too early. Plant number seven is Monstera deliciosa. This is a well-known house plant. It creates these large leaves. It's very tropical looking. You can grow this outside in warmer climates. It likes to have shade and a decent amount of rain. A lot of people don't know that Monstera deliciosa actually will create a fruit. It kind of looks like a dinosaur banana with scales. The fruit has a pineapple banana taste. It's a gorgeous plant. It can be a centerpiece specimen underneath a tree. I'm gonna make some soil from my palm mulch pile here. I'll use a spot where I've already been digging so I can get underneath the pile a little bit to get to the good stuff. So I'll loosen up the mulch a little bit, grab a scoop, put it over here. So I have some nice looking soil. Mulch with some compost mixed in. Soil. Right here we have a Suriname cherry. I think this was the first plant that I actually put in the ground in the food forest about three years ago. It has hundreds of flowers coming on right now. It's kind of all jacked up from Hurricane Ian. I'm probably going to do a little pruning here later. I was doing my morning walk through the food forest and I spotted this little banana growing here, which is pretty odd because I didn't plant that here. This isn't an area that floods and it's been used to pile branches after Hurricane Ian. The only idea I have of where this came from is when the 
tree service came in to clear trees, there's this banana circle over here that they had to drive over. So I'm guessing that that little banana used to be part of this banana circle. And the bobcat, while it was hauling logs over to that pile there, must have picked up this little banana and then dropped it here. So I'll put some mulch down here, clear it up a little bit, and make a new banana circle. I believe that is an apple banana, by the way. There are a lot of lessons you have to learn in trying to get a homestead up and running. Some are way more obvious than others. Some you probably learn when you're young. Some just come natural. Well, I've got one lesson for you today. It's important. It's gonna save you pain. And the lesson is, if you're going to pee on a fire ant mound, make sure you're standing far enough away so that the fire ants can't find your feet. That'll save you some pain. Out. Plant number four is chaya. Chaya contains 5.7 grams of protein per 100 grams of leaf. You have to boil the chaya leaves before you can eat them. You can grow an annual vegetable garden inside of your food forest. Make it a food forest garden. I've had success throwing down seeds when I start a new section, new area of the food forest. You could have even better success if you planted out, started your seeds early, and planted directly in the soil. An added benefit is that you're conditioning the soil. You're adding sugars, the beneficial bacteria, and fungus is growing. So if you decide to put perennials here, the soil is going to be much, much better than if you hadn't planted anything. This is a Suriname cherry tree or bush. It's the improved black variety, which tastes a little sweeter, tastes a little better. Are you thinking about adding edible plants to your landscape, but you don't want a full-blown food forest? These are my top nine food forest plants that are suitable for an edible, ornamental landscape. Each one of these plants is edible and or medicinal, attractive, easy to grow, and easy to propagate. So let's get into it. Plant number one is hibiscus. This is my top choice. The rest are in no particular order. Plant number two is Okinawan spinach. Plant number three is longevity spinach. Plant number four is katuk. Number five, African potato mint. Plant number six, I'm going to group ginger and turmeric together. Plant number seven is Monstera deliciosa. Plant number eight is elephant ear, specifically the colocasia varieties. Alocasia is not edible, colocasia is edible. Plant number nine is butterfly pea. The bonus plant, perennial peanut. Here, uh, the golden custard apple looks beautiful. It got kind of beat up, but look how shiny those new leaves are. Looks really good, I'm happy about that. A mystery plant. We'll figure this out. This is what I call the banana jungle. I'm transplanting all of the Cavendish Home Depot special bananas back here. This area was really devastated by Hurricane Ian. There were two very large trees that pretty much destroyed the whole area, but it's coming back very well even in this dry season. So I'm going to continue to propagate bananas back here and then expand this area just a little bit over in that direction. And this whole spot that was cleared out by the hurricane will be an expansion, but possibly not this year. Snake climbing a tree and eating a frog. This is a black racer snake, small one, eating a Cuban tree frog. Cuban tree frogs are invasive and a big pain in the butt in this area. So this is a good reason why you let snakes roam your territory, eat the annoying Cuban tree frogs. And there's the blackberry jam fruit tree with a little cardboard that Hurricane Ian probably blew over here. Are you looking for a new plant to add to your food forest? A plant that attracts pollinators? A plant that's beneficial and useful? An exotic edible plant that grows just by throwing seeds down and then reseeds itself? This is the rat tail radish plant. It's in the radish family, but instead of growing 
the vegetable underground, the edible part of this plant is this seed pod. I have multiple varieties in my food forest. I have a purple variety and a green variety that make these long seed pods. And then I have another green variety that makes short and fat seed pods. The pods are pretty delicious. Mm, tastes just like a radish. Salad time. Look at all the bees. I'm out in the food forest looking for dried up loofah gourds. I'm going to harvest the seeds so I can plant some new ones. I'm also going to ship some to someone who may be starting food forest here in the near future. This is a jamun tree. Survived the hurricane and the freeze like nothing happened. I've got it planted here where it floods a little bit. This tree can handle it. I don't need to do anything here. I'm just going to let it go. Hey everybody, here's my nice little banana circle that I'm working on today. After I dig it out a little bit more, I need to level it out a little bit, put some cardboard down, throw some mulch on top of the cardboard, dig up a couple of banana pups and put them in here. And right up here is my uh, third, the third banana pit that I put in. We cut down a whole bunch of bird of paradise yesterday, so I uh, put that in here to feed the bananas. This banana pit has been very productive. We've had two or three decent sized racks out of it. We lost one rack to Hurricane Ian, but it's coming back strong. And I just noticed over here, looks like an eggplant blooming. That might become perennial on this spot. We'll have to wait and see. This tree is a little jackfruit. It's kind of in a neglected area of the food forest. This area was also hit hard by Hurricane Ian. A lot of weeds coming up. I need to come back at some point and pull up all this Kogan grass. It's one of my goals this year is to try to eradicate the Kogan grass. Since I'm here, I'll put down a little bit of compost. Can't hurt. Edible plants with beautiful flowers. Cranberry hibiscus with its purple leaves is a great contrast to all the greenery. Cranberry hibiscus has beautiful pink flowers and has gorgeous burgundy calyxes. Here's my Florida King Peach, and I wasn't sure how to prune this guy. I probably should have pruned it much earlier, but I don't want that main leader in there. I want the branches to go laterally. So I'm just gonna cut this off Branches will grow laterally a little better. Take this one too. This is a little, I believe, Vietnamese pepper vine. Makes black pepper seeds. It's fruiting and it's spreading over here and over here. This is a canistel tree. I've got a row of trees here, and this will fit in very nice right in the spot. I had planted a golden custard apple, and I couldn't find it. Couldn't remember where I planted it. Here it is. It's overrun by my forest garden, at least for now. Plant number eight is elephant ear, specifically the colocasia varieties. Alocasia is not edible, colocasia is edible. The tubers that grow under the ground are edible. There are hundreds of varieties of colocasia, different sizes, different colors. It's another specimen plant. It does best in at least partial shade, and it does like water. You can grow this in a bog or pond environment. It doesn't have to be a bog or pond environment, but it will do good in that environment. Okay, this is where I just gorilla planted the chaya and the katuk. Give you a little quick tour of that because there are some plants growing from the seed bombing that I did a few months ago. But chaya, chaya, it's like a brassica of some kind or maybe a radish. Lots more little radishes or brassicas, chaya, cool weather brassica or radish all over in here. I also threw down a lot of seeds that won't germinate until it gets warm. A lot of hibiscus and things like that. A couple of katuk plants, 
took, chaya, took, chaya, took. I think that's about as far as I went. So once again, this isn't going to be 100%. I just did it dirty and fast. That's good enough because this isn't actually part of my food forest, at least not yet. This is an area that's traditionally just way overgrown. It borders the canal on my property. So this is just an opportunity to take back a little bit of land. It was just weeds and jungle. So in this wild mess, there's actually a Barbados cherry. Let's see if I can find it. This is my favorite food forest chair. There it is. Wow. It actually goes way back here. Butterfly pea makes these beautiful blue flowers. The flowers make a blue tea. You can change the color to purple by adding an acidic ingredient like lemon juice. You can also change the color to green by adding an alkaline ingredient. I prefer saffron because it has a natural yellow color and it makes the green even brighter. Plant annuals in your food forest to create a food forest garden. Even cauliflower, like this purple variety. This is where this machete comes in handy. So I can literally start a new food forest with that. Might as well do a little bit of guerrilla gardening with this katuk that I just chopped. Got this whole area at the edge of my property that was kind of cleared out by Hurricane Ian. There's an opportunity to plant some things in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but if I can just put some plants down really quick and easy and they grow, that'll be great. I want to make smaller pieces. So to do that, let's just go like this. Saves a little time. Okay, these are the cuttings that I just chopped up. I'm literally gonna walk for about 40 feet and every few feet just plunk one of these cuttings into the ground. In the rainy season, it's no problem. It's January, so you know not every one of them is gonna grow. Stick it in the ground, stick it in the ground, stick it in the ground, and just repeat that all the way down. So some of that's gonna grow, some of it isn't, but it's well worth the time invested of 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Plant number four is katuk. It grows six to eight feet tall. It's extremely easy to propagate. This is another plant where you take a cutting and stick it in the ground and it grows, especially in the rainy season. The leaves and the berries are edible. Actually, the flowers are edible too, but they're very tiny. The took is highly nutritious and it even contains protein. There aren't very many plants that actually have protein. The took is one of them. The took is highly medicinal. It's great for high blood pressure. I, I personally use this plant to keep myself off of blood pressure medication. You can see this specimen is still growing. It's almost January, Florida 9B. I'll show you what the berries look like. These are some of the berries. They taste a little bit like a peanut. As they get older, they have seeds in them. The seeds are fairly small when the berries are young, but you can still eat the seeds too. Edible plants with beautiful flowers. Ruby hibiscus makes a large purple flower, has green leaves. I use the flower to make tea, and I also use that tea to make hibiscus kombucha. Food forest in a box. Taking a little stroll through my food forest, find some propagation material, create a food forest starter pack. Here's a good candidate. Most people in the South already have sweet potatoes, but they probably don't have this purple variety. So I'll grab a couple of these smaller ones. Find one with uh, roots already. Oh, here we go. There's some roots. Chop right there. A little chop right there. Kind of ugly looking now because there hasn't been rain over a month. Two little purple sweet potato starters. The tubers are actually white on these sweet potatoes. This is how I propagate ground cherries. snake climbing a tree and eating a frog. This is a black racer snake, small one, eating a Cuban tree frog. Cuban tree frogs are invasive and a big pain in the butt in this area. So this is a good reason why you let snakes roam your territory, eat the annoying Cuban tree frogs. Some kind of mutant Florida weed. I believe it's some kind of wild iris. I'm not sure. 
I didn't plan it, that's for sure. Got a plant to unbox. This is a tree daisy, Montanoa, Grandifloria. It's related to Mexican sunflower. Apparently it has uh, beautiful white flowers and it's not quite as hardy as Mexican sunflower, meaning it doesn't spread as easily. So I'm gonna go plant this. I planted that little tree daisy right in between a couple chaya plants. It's a nice little row that I'll have going here. And in the process, I found some sweet potatoes. The cranberry hibiscus is really coming to life. A lot of flowers. I need to prune this back, but it's a shame with all these flowers. The sherbet berry is blooming despite the month-long drought. It's got berries already. Not ripe yet, but it has berries. This must be a really good spot for this tree. The wild Florida blueberries are really coming in. There's a lot of berries. Once they get ripe, the birds will start eating them. Nice big spider web. For some reason, these wild blueberry plants only grow on the east side of my property. They're plentiful on the east side of my property, though. There are a lot of the blueberry plants mixed in here with this gallberry, I believe. I need to figure out how to clear the gallberry out of here without destroying the blueberries. I think it's going to be a lot of hard manual labor. Food forest in a box. So if you've been watching my videos, you know that I love hibiscus. So we've got to include hibiscus. This is cranberry hibiscus, one of my favorites. The leaves are delicious and the pink flowers are beautiful. I'm just going to grab this little stem and I'll take the seeds out of these dried up pods. Growing your own fresh organic food is good for the body, mind, and soul. African potato mint, carrots, Everglades tomatoes, eggplant, a few different kinds of radishes, cauliflower, leafy green, mustard greens, kale. Get out there and do it. You can do it too. This ground cherry that I made a video about earlier has died back, certainly because it's springtime, it's the dry season, the temperature is rising, but there's no rain. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest these ground cherries, take the ones inside that are good to eat, and I'll show you how to propagate gorilla style with the other ones. Those are the ones that I'm going to eat. These ones weren't quite ripe enough to eat. I'm going to propagate some seeds, a little gorilla gardening. This is how I propagate ground cherries. Food forest in a box. Every food forest needs cassava. It's a tree that gives you a root crop, very starchy, staple crop. This one was blown over by Hurricane Ian and it's just kind of been neglected. This plant roots by cuttings very easily. I'll go ahead and take a large cutting. Potentially get three four plants out of this. I'll go add this to the box. This next plant is a guava tree. I'm going to plant it in between these two bananas. These banana plants are mostly for biomass. This cocoa plum tree was pretty mangled by Hurricane Ian, but starting to bloom. Last year I made cocoa plum vinegar. We had so many cocoa plums. And while I'm at it today, I'm going to make some mulberry cuttings. Because also on my list of goals is to improve my nursery. So I'll do some cuttings. So the last thing to do is take those mulberry cuttings that I made, just put them in the water for now until I can put them in some soil. Here's a, a cherry of the Rio Grande. It was a lot bushier. It's kind of leggy now. 
lost some limbs, but it does have some new growth. I think that'll be fine. Cardboard is great at suppressing weeds, it conserves water, and it builds soil. And it's also sustainable. So yeah, use cardboard. <sighs> Done. There we go. New section of the food forest. Okay, let's see what we have here. The ginger. That was barely even attached. Might even find some sweet potatoes in here. Get rid of this Kogan grass while we're at it. There we go. This is a big one. Wow. Look at that. It's a pretty good piece of ginger. Take this for the kitchen. I'll replant this right here. and I'll propagate this piece somewhere else. There's a cherry of the Rio Grande right here. It's kind of crowded by this pigeon pea that was giving it protection in the winter time. I'll do a quick chop and drop just right around it. There we go. It has some room to grow now. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I think it's Aki, it's an Aki tree, Ligia sapita. Here's a canistel, sapote, Puteria campachiana. I'm sure I'm butchering that. It's another yellow buttercup. Oh, this one even has a flower on it already. And this is the same as the mystery plant before. So what is it? Oh, wait a minute. No, it isn't. Is it? No, I don't think so. I'll get back to that mystery plant. This is a blackberry jam fruit. This is a sugar apple tree. I'm going to plant it here amongst a hibiscus patch, mostly just because I have to put it somewhere. This almond bush that I just planted is putting on a flower. I follow Odenwald Tropical Fruit Trees on YouTube, and I also buy fruit trees there. So I'll give you a little tour around this part of my food forest here and show you what I've bought from Ian. Then over here is a Vietnamese pomegranate. I planted it up here on this little mound because they don't really like a lot of water. It's doing really good even in the drought here. There was one fruit on it when we bought it. We got two fruits in the first season. But unfortunately in Florida, pomegranates have trouble with uh, splitting. The fruit will split because of all the humidity in the water. But maybe someday we'll get some good fruits. This is vetiver grass. It's used for a chop and drop. It's very good living mulch. The root system goes down up to 10 feet, so it's bringing up a lot of nutrients that other plants can't get to. Hmm, I see something else interesting. What in the heck? This is a Florida king peach that lost all of its leaves from Hurricane Ian. It has little buds. It looks like the leaves are going to grow back, but here's something very unexpected. has a little flower bud. No leaves, but a little flower bud. Unbelievable. And this is the same as the mystery plant before. So what is it? Oh, wait a minute. No, it isn't. Is it? No, I don't think so. I'll get back to that mystery plant. This is a blackberry jam fruit. So little tip. When you're using a knife to cut tape, open a box, make sure that you always have the knife blade pointed away from you, like that. Don't do something like this. 
do it like that. The reason why should be obvious. Remember, cut away, away from your body, so you don't stab yourself. Cut away from the body. I want every glazed tomatoes everywhere. So this is how to propagate them. The best and easiest way. Oh, uh, whoops. In my hair. Here is the Jamun tree. He really loves this spot because it floods. We'll probably prop this up a little bit better. But um, actually, it's not doing too bad. It's grown about six feet in the last year. This colocasia didn't completely die back in wintertime. And we have a couple little babies coming up. I'll propagate this around. Okay, that's it. Nice mulch. Hot Florida summer brassica. Great big huge taro. Four kinds of peppers. A rare longevity spinach. Summer producing Asian wing beans. Late roselle. Cow pea that doesn't vine up everything. Fantastic. Okay, that's it. Nice mulch. Hot Florida summer brassica. Great big huge taro. Four kinds of peppers. A rare longevity spinach. Summer producing Asian wing beans. Late roselle. Cow pea that doesn't vine up everything. Fantastic. Here's a canistel, sapote. Poteria Campochiana. I'm sure I'm butchering that. This is the pineapple that I bought. It's a Florida special. I kept it in the packaging. I'm going to plant that today. I'm also going to transplant a few pineapples that I have planted in a bad spot. Here's my strawberry tree. Got some more flowers. It also has berries. They're not ripe yet though. Plant number six. I'm going to group ginger and turmeric together. Plants look very similar, they're related. Both plants create a medicinal and edible tuber and they both create gorgeous flowers. They typically like some shade. They both have gorgeous foliage. They create gorgeous flowers. They make edible and medicinal tubers that you can harvest and they're easy to propagate with the tubers. Got some African potato mint by accident. This might turn into a harvest video. Okay, since I'm getting an unanticipated harvest of African potato mint, figured I would do a quick video. This is the African potato mint. It's a great summer plant in hot environments. Comes up out of the ground in June. This is December and it's blooming and it's probably gonna die back soon. This is what a really small African potato mint tastes like. The plant itself, it's, a, it's in the mint family. The leaves aren't really edible. They don't have a mint taste. They make a great ground cover they get thick really fast. But the main useful benefit from African potato mint is the fact that it makes these little tubers that you eat just like potatoes. So let's see how many more we got in this little spot. Here, there's a sweet potato. Oh, my back. Okay, accidental harvest. Got a couple sweet potatoes, some African potato mint, and a bean. Edible plants with beautiful flowers. I'm going to group ginger and turmeric together. Plants look very similar. They're related. Both plants create a medicinal and edible tuber, and they both create gorgeous flowers. They typically like some shade. They both have gorgeous foliage. They create gorgeous flowers. They make edible and medicinal tubers that you can harvest, and they're easy to propagate with the tubers. Dwarf tamarillo making flowers. This here is a blackberry jam fruit. There's not really anything to do in this spot. I did some chop and drop. 
in a video about a month ago. So, grow. This is a Florida king peach. Lost all of its leaves in September. It had only been in the ground for maybe two or three months at that point. It has bloomed four times. We've got one right now. And for about a few weeks, it looked like it was trying to make a peach, but that didn't happen. I'm looking forward to this one growing this season. You might not be able to notice, but there's a lychee tree right here. I'm gonna chop this Mexican sunflower. Lychee trees are supposedly very susceptible to high winds, but it wasn't really damaged in Hurricane Ian. Maybe it had some protection here, but it did have some leaf damage from the freeze in January. Overall though, it's looking pretty good. This is the other side of the banana pit where I just showed you the sour sop. We have a moringa over here that's starting to put on some leaves. It started several times, but then it, it's been too dry. This spot here isn't really too bad. I just need more ground cover. And right here is the African potato mint patch where I also interplanted some Florida betony. So similar to what I did on the other side, I'm going to make the row a little more pronounced in the middle more of a mid row with lots of mulch I'm going to plant out the ground cover in here and I'll put down a few bushes and trees too